Hi, Bill from The Educated Landlord. Today's video is a little bit different than some of the previous videos I've been doing. Uh, previously I've been talking about tips and how to be a better landlord. Today we're going to talk about mistakes. So I've been a landlord for quite a while now and a lot of the information I've learned over the years has been passed on from other landlords other individuals been in, who have been involved with uh, real estate and it's really helped my education in the, the, the landlord business grow. Uh, the problem is when you first start out you may not have these mentors or, or people to help you and that's where you make the mistakes, the mistakes that can cost you a lot of money. And I've been in that scenario multiple times. I've lost lots of money in real estate and it's never a pleasant feeling. So. Today I'm just going to talk about some of the mistakes that you uh, can possibly make when you're first starting out and just make you aware of them so you can avoid them. And if you can avoid them, unlike I did, uh, potentially it can save you a lot of headaches. So let's get started here. Uh, sorry the video is a little bit longer today, but uh, hopefully it's got some great value for you. So if I think back to one of our first rental properties, uh, way back in uh, 2004 this happened to us we put a couple into our nice little upstairs rental suite uh, in a nice little district and we broke some of our rules and that's one of the biggest mistakes that landlords make not following your rules and we had a pretty good screening process at the time it's it's evolved since then it's become much better and what we did is we we essentially let people in we shouldn't have. Uh, we didn't follow all our rules and we went with our gut and we ran into some people who were having kind of a hard time and we actually should never have put them in there but we felt it was the right thing to do. It may have been the right thing to do initially but it sure backfired on us. Uh, we ended up having to evict them right before Christmas. It was roughly six months later and you know, it's heartbreaking enough that I had to evict somebody just before Christmas, but when they were out on the 23rd and we stopped in to look at the property uh, on the uh, afternoon of the 23rd, essentially, I guess it was, they'd trashed the place. You know, not holes in the wall with punches and, and everything, uh, but their, their kids, their three kids, had uh, used nail polish on all the registers and cupboards and handles in the kitchen. Um, there were holes because they put pictures all over the place and left shelving up that wasn't put up properly that we'd never followed up and checked on and it was quite a lesson we had to completely repaint the property from front to back uh, do an extensive cleaning and at the time I was working full-time uh, I had not quite moved to full-time real estate and I had a limited time off at Christmas and I spent Boxing Day and much of my Christmas break repainting and fixing up the property so I could get it back on the market for January 1st. So the big lesson from this mistake is always follow your systems. You know, it's it's good to have a gut check on somebody, but if you don't have systems in place to follow, it can backfire and you eventually end up with a tenant situation similar to what I had. So that's one of the big mistakes I learned early on. Another big mistake, trust. Now this is a dual-edged sword. So it's important to be able to trust people, but when you're a landlord and you're running a business of being a landlord, you've got to remember that it's a business as well as trust. And I've had plenty of issues with everything from tenants to partners, even to lenders, where what they said they were going to do never ended up being what actually came about. And in my worst instance, I'm out sixty, seventy thousand dollars Smaller instances, maybe a month's rent or slightly less. But it's quite an expensive lesson to learn over time, especially if you have multiple properties. So while trust is important, a lot of what you have to do has to be backed up with documentation. If you have partners that you work with, you need to have specific partner paperwork in place. If you have interest in property and you're not necessarily on the title or the deed, you've got to make sure that there's caveats in place protecting you. It's just all these little steps to make sure that you're protected in the long run. 
And, you know, if somebody finds offense with it, if they feel that, you know, they can't trust you because you want to do all these details, maybe they're not the right person to do business with. Maybe you have to think of it from that standpoint. You have to look out for yourself. You have to make sure everything is proper and is going to be good for you. You know, we're, we're talking properties and scenarios where there's potentially hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars on the table. And that's not something these days, unfortunately, that can be left simply to trust. You have to make sure everything's in place. The final mistake I want to talk about is your time. And this is where a lot of new landlords run into so many issues and difficulties. Your time is way more valuable than you believe it is. And when you get caught up doing all these little fix-ups all the time, rather than hiring somebody or bringing somebody in, it just weighs your time down and suddenly your family time's gone, uh, your free time is gone, and you start to hate your business as a landlord. And I've seen it time after time where landlord feels he has to be the one to paint the entire property. I'm raising my hand right now because I'm, I'm guilty of this quite often myself. So what I try to put into my decision making is what's going to be more efficient. Am I going to be able to make more money doing something else, be it my daytime job if I have one, be it my consulting work if that's what I do? Um, if I'm out there doing that, am I going to make more money than spending a day or two or three painting a property? Uh, I'm in a special situation because the real estate is 99% of my work, so quite often it's easier for me to do it. But again, it might be easier and faster if I hire somebody at a reasonable rate to get the work done while I'm doing something else. You know, so if they're painting, I can be out finding new tenants for a property, and that's far more important and puts more money back into my pocket as a landlord than the actual labor. So the third mistake basically is understand your time and understand what your time's worth, and don't get caught and trapped doing all of the work yourself. You know, there's, there's lots of contractors you can bring in to get stuff done. Uh, we've talked in other videos about uh, understanding how contractors are uh, good, fast, cheap. You've got to do that balance and you've got to decide what fits your lifestyle and your business. So hope you enjoyed today's video. A uh, little different, like I said. Um, love to get more feedback from you, so feel free to leave comments uh, on, the, on the video. Uh, and let me know what we think. Um, we're, we're around video 11 or 12 right now. Uh, I'd like to get this up to 20, get some more feedback. And uh, if I get enough positive feedback, we'll keep on doing these. Uh, otherwise, we'll cap it off at 20 and just kind of leave it there. So thanks for your time and hope you enjoyed.